everyone, I'm Faith Aguilar, registered nurse and certified nutrition coach for the virtual care team at Oscar. Today we're going to talk about portion control. This is a simple but tough change to apply to your everyday life and it can make a great difference in helping you become your best self. So first let's take a look at portion size. Now we can use our hand to measure. So let's start with our fist. The fist is about a cup, so that's what we're gonna use for our vegetables. Um, next, our palm. Our palm is about three ounces, so that's what we would use to measure our protein. Meat, poultry, fish, right here, three ounces. Um, our thumb, it's gonna be about a solid ounce, and that's what we're gonna use for our healthy fats. So this is a good tool because you, when you're eating out or not at home, unable to measure, your hand goes with you, so no worries there. All right, now let's look at your plate size. Now your plate size should be nine inches. This is really important because if your plate is too large and you're trying so hard to be mindful of your correct portion size, a larger plate can make your portions look like little samples. So for example, when you're using a 12 inch plate, you, when you're putting the portion sizes in, you kind of tend to put a little more to fill up the plate, but a 12 inch plate can add 250 calories to your meal. So for one meal, maybe not too terrible, but if you eat three times a day, that 750 calories, say you eat every day, so that's 5,250 calories, that can result in a weight gain of one and a half pounds per week. We do not want to do that. So help yourself out and use the correct plate size. Okay, now I'm using a nine inch plate here to demonstrate. So we're going to have two fists or two cups for our vegetables. Uh, for our starch or carbs, we're going to have one fist or one cup, that's our potato. And then for our protein, we're going to use chicken in this example, and that'll be our palm or three ounces for our protein. So if you'd like, you can also use a plate with a clock face just to kind of get a better visual. So that would be 12 to three for our starch, three to six for our protein, and six to 12 for our vegetables. Now, this looks good, but it's going to take a while for our minds and our stomachs to get used to. So just be patient with yourself. Okay, so like I mentioned, I know this change is going to be tough. So here are some tips that may help you to get used to your new way of eating. Uh, first tip is take your time. This can be tough because when we come home or just in the evening when there's more people in the house, more distractions, um, you're hungry, you want to just kind of quickly eat as fast as you can and then move on to whatever else it is you have to do. But please try to take your time, uh, chew your food slowly, um, take small bites, pause before your next bite. Um, if you can, join in the conversation if you're not eating alone. So that will help with digestion um, and it'll also help, you know, to help you feel full. One important thing is being present while eating. There's a lot of distractions going on usually. So please try to sit at the table. Don't stand up while eating because you're going to dart somewhere, you know, after try to enjoy. So set the table, sit down at the table, um, turn off distractions like your television, um, take a few deep breaths and inhale the aroma of the food as it's being cooked. So that'll also help you to you know, be more mindful, take your time and just slow things down. Also your beverage choice. Now this can be difficult too. If you can, please choose water. Um, that's your safest bet. If you don't like the way just plain water tastes, you can squirt a little lemon or lime in there to jazz it up a little. Um, any soda or sugary drinks, they kind of tend to pack a lot more calories. So if you can, go with water. 
uh, also alcoholic beverages. They have a lot more calories um, or depending on how many you drink, it might impair your judgment. So if you're trying so hard to stick with your portion sizes, once you have a drink or two of an alcoholic beverage, then that may impair your willpower. So you might go in for a second helping when you normally wouldn't if you weren't drinking the alcohol. So play it safe with water. Well, I hope this information has been helpful to you. Uh, please join us next time when we'll be discussing cooking tips to keep you on track while preparing food. Bye-bye.